Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. And this episode is about the 3D printer. If you're considering adding one to the, your workshop, stick around because I've got three reasons why you might not want to do that and three reasons why you will want to do that. So let's just get to an overview of what a 3D printer is and then I'll uh, get to the reasons why or why not. So the basic operation of the 3D printer is you take a spool of filament, you put it on this holder, and the variety make, makes have different one, uh, different holder mechanisms. It feed it feeds into this gear mechanism, which is called an extruder. Shoves that filament down a hollow tube called a Bowden tube or Bowden. I'm not sure how you want to pronounce it. And in here is a heated nozzle. It also has a cooling fan and it basically melts the filament, shoves it through a nozzle and deposits it layer by layer to build or print your 3D item. So this goes left and right for an XY, the table goes in and out for uh, the Y axis, I think this is X, this is Y, doesn't really matter. Uh, and then this print head will move up and down to give you the z-axis or third axis of the machine. That's basically how the machine works. So how do you get a design to the machine? And there's two basic ways to do that. The first is there's, there's several sites. There's hundreds of thousands of designs that you can download and they typically come in what's called STL format, which is a stereo lithography. And uh, you import that into what's called a slicer software. And the slicer software, I've, I've used two of them, Prusa and Cura. And those two pieces of software are free. You can download them, you can slice those STL files up. And what that does, it will output the, the geometric code or g-code that's particular to whatever printer you have and then it will slice that layer by layer uh, and tell this machine what to do to print your item the other way is to create your own STL and or 3d model and you typically do that on some three-dimensional CAD software and the two I've used are Fusion 360 and Alibre Design Pro. And you can get the hobby version or personal version of Fusion 360 at no charge. It lit, there are some limitations on what you can do with it, but overall it is a very robust uh, piece of software. You can use that to create your STL file, export it, and actually Fusion 360 will export it directly to Cura, which will slice your uh, model up into uh, uh, and generate the G-code that, that you need for uh, your machine. So in essence, that's what a 3D printer is and how it works and how you can get a file from, from either your own design or some, some design that somebody else has done and, and use it yourself. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip back and forth between reasons why you wouldn't want to get a 3D printer and reasons why you might want to get a 3D printer. And the first reason why you, not, you may not want to get a 3D printer is my experience with this one. Now this is a low-end model so it's, it had its own issues, but the learning curve for a 3D printer is steep, or at least it was for me it was much steeper and more difficult to learn and use this machine than it was my CNC machine, which I got about the same time. If you expect a plug and play on a machine like this, which is a Creality, and yeah, you can print something right out of the box and check its function and yeah, it'll print, but they won't necessarily be calibrated or very good prints. So I struggled with this machine for I want to say over two months before I started getting what I would refer to as good quality prints from it. So if you are adverse to steep learning curves 
the 3D printer may not be the printer for you, or at least this one. I'm sure there are other high-end printers that are probably better, but I had to do a lot of hardware tweaks and software tweaks to actually get this machine functioning right. And I don't want to go into those because I'm not an expert on it. I watched a bunch of YouTube content on how people fix this particular machine and it, they worked. They worked very well. So that is reason number one of why you may not want to get a 3D printer. A steep learning curve that you're just not willing to go through. Okay, so reason number one why you might want to get a 3D printer is that what you need just isn't made. You think it should be made, but it isn't. So let me zoom the camera in on what I've got on the table and I'll show you what I mean. If you've been woodworking any time, you've probably used or seen some of these. Uh, these are Woodstock International fittings, and I've often uh, questioned why they call them fittings because they often don't fit. They either don't fit a machine, they don't fit a portable power tool you've got, vacuum hoses don't fit, sometimes you've got metric fittings, but anyway, you've, you're always dealing with, you know, typically either using duct tape or electrical tape or bicycle inner tubes or something to get things to fit together correctly. Now these uh, fittings were provided by Mark's Machinery in Fort Smith, Arkansas for this video. And the situation Mark's got in his classroom is that he's got a portable dust collector that he moves from machine to machine and what he wants to do is to have two fittings that connect together where he connects two pieces of hoses. And for whatever reason, Woodstock International requires the use of three fittings to do that. These are called thread splices. And up until I, Mark gave me these, I, I didn't realize they came in both left hand and right hand version uh, uh, threads. But anyway, here's a, here's a hose coupling. So these will not fit on the hose coupling. Neither end, I mean, it will start to engage, but it won't fully engage, and it's not a very secure uh, situation. Woodstock told Mark that, hey, uh, we make a fitting for that, and it does fit on the inside. So in order to connect two hoses together with the Woodstock system, you have to have three pieces or three fittings. Now these, Mark wants to do is take two fittings like this and just have them fit together without a, the use of a third fitting. Now you could use a blast gate, but that's again, that's the expense of the third fitting, whatever it might be. So Mark gave me these uh, fittings and I brought them home and took 10 minutes worth of measurements on the fittings to figure out the taper, the pitch, various outside, inside diameters and I came up with this fitting that I 3D printed. Now I, I didn't use uh, ABS, this is PLA filament, but first time out of the gate it fits. And I'm going to provide several of these for use in Mark's classroom, but this is one reason why you might want to consider a 3D printer. I will say this up front that if this was commercially available, to make that connection, there's no way I would consider uh, 3D printing it because this is the cost of the fitting. Four dollars. The fitting I 3D printed was just over two dollars in material and it took 12 hours to print. So money-wise, yeah, it's a little less, but how much how much is that worth? Because it didn't even consider design time. Uh, and if you're just doing one, yeah, it's probably not worth it. But anyway, a 3D printer might be a good choice for you if you need to make custom fittings. And there's more custom things you can do, and you'll see some of those later in this video. So reason number one is they just don't make what you want. And you can print one out yourself. Let's move on. Like I said, there's hundreds of thousands of designs you can download for free. 
And a lot of those are good, but some of them are not so good. Uh, what I found the best ones are if you've got an item that's just a standalone item and it works for your particular application, those designs are typically all pretty good. If you got a tweak on them though, that's a problem. And I usually find it more easier to just go design my own rather than use an existing file. So, but if you're not the type of person who wants to tweak or make, on, make their own designs, a 3D printer will be limiting in what others have done. And because of that, you may not want to consider getting a 3D printer because when you deal with interfacing with other equipment that you have in your shop, the items you're able to 3D print may not work. Okay, reason number two why you might want to consider getting a 3D printer. And this is similar to item number one where just a part has never been made that you need. Uh, but this is a, a bandsaw table insert for my Agazani bandsaw. Now commercially this used to be available or a replacement uh, table insert used to be available but Agazani went out of business. And so this bandsaw uh, table insert is similar to the other one, but I improved on it. I used heat, uh, heat set it threaded inserts in this and had set screws down where you can adjust the leveling from the top. In the one that was provided by the factory, there were nuts down here and you had to tweak on a screw and then put it, in, put it in the table, find out, make sure you were level or not. But this, uh, you can improve on manufacturer parts or even make parts that are no longer available from a manufacturer. Okay, reason number three why you might not want to get a 3D printer is 3D, if you're not a patient person, a 3D printer may not be for you because these 3D prints, while you can print these inexpensively, you can, um, they take a long time to print. I don't remember what this took to print, but I remember it was probably on the order of four or five hours at least. Uh, this, 3D print took 12 hours to print out. And just 3D printers are just extraordinarily slow. And uh, I just don't see that the technology, maybe I could start pushing the limits, but I would suffer with the quality of print, uh, extrusion or the layer adhesion and, and all those sorts of things. But if you're not a patient person, <laughs> you may not want a 3D printer. Okay, so let's get to the third and final reason why you might want to get a 3D printer. I, I've got three blast gates that are anywhere from eight to nine and a half feet above the floor. And I, on two of those gates, I was remotely operating them with reach rods. The third gate, I used a stick because it was an odd angle and then the reach rod didn't fit. So that's one of the things I decided to fix this year. And I found a video, Robert Cowan made a video where he did a, a bracket for a blast gate with a pneumatic cylinder and then uh, had an operating arm that he connected to the gate. His gate was different than my gate, so I couldn't really use his design. And what I ended up doing was just starting, taking his idea or the concept and basically fitting that to my gate. Now there were commercial options available for me. I know Echo Gate makes the NordFab connection. I do not know what they cost. I'm sure they're high dollar. NordFab makes two, two options. One is um, their base, I think it's their basic option for a gate with a pneumatic operator was cost, the cost on that was $842 per gate, which to me it was just unconscionable to me why I would ever pay that much for a blast gate. And that was their least expensive option. They have a more expensive option that has the, the uh, seals, which are kind of the improvements I did when I improved the last uh, blast gate video I did. 
and uh, the price on that was over fourteen hundred dollars per gate in the sizes that I was looking at. So there's no way I was if I wasn't going to spend eight hundred forty-two dollars. There's no way I was going to spend fourteen hundred. So I fit Robert Cowan's uh, design to my blast gate. Total, all total parts, tubing, pneumatic cylinder, the handle actuator, the hardware to, to connect everything, cost me less than $70 per gate. And I'm very happy with that. I mean, I don't have to go to extreme efforts to operate the blast gates. So if you've got an item that is commercially available, but just beyond the cost of what you're willing to spend, a 3D printer might be right for you. So those are my three reasons of why you may or may not want a 3D printer in for your shop. Now I use mine solely for utility purposes. I don't use it to print plastic parts to include in my woodworking projects, but I found it quite useful for me and I realize it will not be useful for everybody because sometimes we're just not, we don't have the same needs. So I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can download this uh, dust collection fitting that will fit the Woodstock International uh, fitting. I think what I will do is take the threads off because I don't know whether you've got a left hand or right hand thread. I'll probably add a little rib around there. Uh, just kind of keep the hose secure and you can use a hose clamp. And if you've got a 3D printer or intend on getting one, uh, this might be a good fitting for you. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching and I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and we'll catch you on the next one. Have a great one.